Welcome back everyone to another episode of Dark Souls Lore Through. Hey. Yeah, so the... Yeah, that was Calamine. I didn't realize that was how close I needed to get. Um, so yeah. There's a dragon in this area. And we'll be seeing more of him later. Someone walking around up here. Yeah, that's a trap. fell for it. We can see this gaping hole with this weird colorblind, but I think that's purple. Haze, and we can hear this interesting like wind sound effect. And down there we can see the abyss. We're familiar with the abyss. We've traversed it. As far as we know, oops, we're the only ones that have traversed it. Uh, I mean, we know that Beatrice did but I didn't really get her items yet to, to fully confirm that, so. I could have, but I just haven't. That'll be for a, another episode. So yeah, where do we go here? Can't remember if we're meant to jump over there, so uh, that's where we're going. So let's go over here first. So, so it looks like. So yeah, I mean he destroyed it here, but it looks like there's this the abyss is coming out. And you know, that was a tree and it completely corrupted it. It like made it like this weird tree. So like Elizabeth said, it looks like the the dark is about to consume Ulisil. Yeah, we can see a couple of trees. Bet you I don't get this. There we go. Oops. Oops, come on. Oh, there's two guys coming. Better take this guy out quickly. Oh, don't. It's all about the timing. Just rolled too too early there. Hmm. 
So yeah, I've no I wonder how many how easy it is to to just rush this area here. I suppose they don't put a lot of enemies right in this main path. <laughs> Except for these. Oh come on. I I rolled there. Alright. Note that Calamite, the dragon, only comes once. Huh. I thought I was killing these guys with one hit. It's weird. Alright. This is not nice. Like, what, when is this guy here? Come on. Alright. Guess he falls down from that top area. I don't think you can get that uh, scissor weapon. Oh, he's, he's properly chasing me. Uh, and we didn't want to go this way. There it is. Four-pronged plow. I don't believe it's the most lore-rich <laughs> weapon in the game, but... It's unique to the DLC. Four-pronged plow wheedled by the wooden scarecrows, serfs of the forest sanctuary. The scarecrow serfs would not normally use these four-pronged prong plows as weapons, but their sharpness makes them very deadly. The fact that they're called serfs kind of implies to me that they are. Uh, there's a um, culture here. And they, you know, that there's like a class system. I guess this is just the area that I wanted to go. Um, I guess we'll just take this area out. Try to do it one by one. See if we can we'll get one at a time. Okay. That's razor thin. Oh, I didn't grab him. Okay, good. All right. Come on, boy. That's a weird path to take. Alright, more twinklin. That's all I need. Oh, that's not more twinklin. Stone, stone Great X. Great X born by the stone knights who guard the forest sanctuary. This Great X, requiring inhuman strength to wield and more fitted for manual labor than battle, is nevertheless completely lethal. So, yeah, I mean, both the descriptions on the, uh, the weapons from this area imply that they weren't meant for weapons that I mean it which is weird particularly with these guys because they are they are called the uh, the guardians so it would imply that they were you know here for the purpose oh my goodness And they don't have repair powder. Um, I don't think in this game, man, it's just, it just show me to be such a noob. I love how you can see. Them actually cutting the trees.
Um, in this game, I, I mean, I don't think there's any penalty for it breaking. I mean, I think it just does low damage. So, like, this does half damage now, I believe. And then, if I can get back to a bonfire, like, it's, I mean, if I break it, it just does zero damage. So I feel like I'm fine here. I mean, assuming I don't break it. But again, even if I do, like, I don't know, I feel... I feel fine. Yeah, we can get a different view of this. Uh, Coliseum is the word I was trying to come up with before. We can actually see down into it. And we can see a town. Which we'll, which we'll actually be able to go to. Gold coin, interesting. Alpha Lloyd. Yep, yeah, same same exact one from the first game. Or from the first game, from the main game. Um, the waters are nice here. Um, all right, let's just do it. I mean, why not? Why not? Let's just go balls to the wall here. I ha what else do I have? Should I need it? I do have a dagger plus 10. Which is not great, but I mean it's... I certainly have scaling to that, so... A lot of random holes here. We get Elizabeth's mushroom. Actually, daggers do their best at their critical. All right, let's read Elizabeth's mushroom. Large medicinal mushroom of Elizabeth, keeper of the sanctuary. Eating this mushroom invigorates the flesh and greatly restores HP for a limited duration. Its dramatic effect can make the difference between a warrior's life and death. We can see more areas here where the abyss has kind of taken hold and there's holes in the world. I mean it seems to fundamentally like change the fabric of, of the world which is kind of interesting. And then yeah this is where I was debating jumping over. Um, but I actually think that that's not possible. Uh, we jumped this though. Guardian Helm, which I don't know says anything different. Yeah. So we have one more. One more piece of armor. Um, I'm sure you can parry these guys. <sighs> yeah. Oh, come on. 
like holding up my shield one second too late. Oh, I don't know if you can, yeah, there we go. Not really sure I'm gonna fight this, uh, guardian, stone guardian thing, whatever. Wow, that guy like looked out over the edge. Um, there's that waterfall that we've seen before. So I'll make sure this other guardian doesn't come after us. He's coming right this way. This is a good area to fight though. All right, come on. This is just where we find Come on, I wanted to go on the other side. They avoid your back steps. It's a cool flower. Wait. Is this the only one left? Stocking up on Twinklin, I should have come here when I was leveling up my uh, gear. Guardian armor. Again, I don't think there's anything new. Nope. That's that. All right. Let's go uh, unlock the shortcut so I can go back and uh, repair my weapon. Sure that I surround this first building here because I guess this isn't the shortcut, is it? <clears throat> well, hopefully I uh, have enough to get through whatever I need to get through here. Did I get this this one right here? Nope. Gotcha, yeah, right, 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 right. All right. So here's the Coliseum. There's a door over here. Let's 
see a closer view of the city. Looks like it's sinking. It looks like, you know, like these are like falling in here. Huh, what's that? Um, looks like a boss fight here. And then there's just, there, that sounds like there's definitely an item here I'm missing. It's right here. Uh, yeah, and we can go down there, but we're not going to go down there. That's just telling you, you can go down there, but that's a whole other thing. I'm going to go there last, probably. I hear some dogs. I see some dogs. Hmm. Ah, let me guess. Snatched by a shadowy limb and dragged off to the past. Hmm. Based on what he says right there, that implies to me that he is not of this time. I mean, I mean, it does take some lateral thinking, but you don't have to be a genius to be like, would a person of this time ask that? Looks like he is the, uh, what's that mask called? The anonymous mask. Um... But he, he seems to have encountered the same fate, being pulled in by that hand and dragged into the past. He's such an interestingly dressed guy. He's got like a doctor's bag, a few burlap sacks. He has a dagger attached to his thigh, and he's got a top hat and, of course, this ether mask, or he's just really, really weird looking. Yes, of course. Exactly what happened to me. Aha. We are both strangers in this strange land. But at least now there are two of us. I don't know if that means that he was in Lordran and did the same events that we did to get here through like a convolution of time, like Solaire and all that, or whether he came through here through a completely different method. But yeah, he sells a lot of cool stuff, so... Um, all the stuff we've seen and read. He's just like... We still see humanity for 10,000. Um, he's just... He's a good way to get a bunch of handy stuff. And, uh... Yeah. I guess there's nothing special. I thought he might have one or two things special, but no. It's just all just stuff you might need. Did you happen across Knight Artorias? The legendary Abyss Walker from the old tales. Well, if you haven't, it's just as well. He's a colorless sort, if you ask me. <laughs> well, we haven't met Artorius, of course. We've just been walking around Royal Wood, but um, he says he's a colorless sort, and I suppose if you were involved with the Dark and the, uh, the Abyss, you probably would have... A lack of color, maybe? And he laughed like it's a joke, so... So, what did that giant mushroom make you do? Not that I care. It's none of my business. <laughs> I don't really know what Jester's role is in this whole thing. I mean, he seems very ominous, and he laughs at all the questions that he asks, and he implies, what did that mushroom make you do? Like... Like, we were put on to save... I mean, we haven't done anything anyway, but, like, if we were put on to agree to save Dusk in some way? Hmm. I've little to talk about, really. Oh, you know me. What do I know? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, you don't know much. So long. All right. Now this is the shortcut I was thinking of. Now we're back here. 
All right, so we've successfully completed this area, the Royal Wood. We have obtained every item in it, I believe. And we've cleared out every enemy, whether we need to or not. And we've unlocked the shortcut to the boss. So, ooh, look at those mushrooms. A lot of mushrooms here. I've recently become interested in mushrooms. I know this is a lore through and it's all about Dark Souls, but on my in my personal life I've been interested in mushrooms. Not just uh, psychedelic, but I just mean uh, medicinal or the origins of mushrooms. Very interesting. Uh, so yeah, it only takes a hundred to repair our pretty much dead katana to, to full, so I don't know about the repair me mechanic in general. Um, it is interesting, by the way, too, I just thought of, we repair, well, never mind. <laughs> I was like, we repair at a bonfire, which is light, but I guess we buy a repair box for that, so ignore what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. I feel like I've I've learned so many cool insights while playing this playthrough that sometimes I probably put too much uh, faith in my <laughs> thoughts that I have while playing. And if I just sit back and think about it and it don't make much sense but I'm just fascinated that repair is done with light and that that is substantiated in uh, in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 um oh still alive are you think of anything that you might need I don't think he says anything until the event happens but mm -hmm. yeah so long all right, well, let's go see what's going on with this uh, boss fight here. Or suppose a boss fight. It's a boss fight. Knight Artorius. So it looks like he's got the dark going on with him a lot. Also looks like he's lost half of his body, his use of half of his body. Oops. What? As I was farming in the uh, forest here, I uh, I forgot that I uh, I said that there was something important in here when I was in Darker Garden, and of course I didn't even check here. So 
And it's a blue Titanite slab.
There it is. The Soul of Artorias. That was a little harder than I remember. Um, but, um, yeah, there's a couple cool things here. Um, let's read the Soul of Artorias. Soul of Lord Gwyn's Knight Artorias, who was consumed by the Abyss. Hmm. He used to be called an Abyss Walker, that is, someone who came to the Abyss and came back. But this is who was consumed. The legend that Artorias repelled the Abyss only told half of the story. It seems that he was defeated and his honor preserved by some unsung hero who is the true victor over the Abyss. I wonder who that could be. I wonder who it is that is going to defeat the Abyss. It's us. <laughs> That's what this whole DLC is for. We are going to uh, go and fight a being called Manus. And uh, and so the, the, the Abyss was defeated. Uh, as was Artorias by us and so in legend they say because everyone knew Artorias was going to go and defeat it they say that uh, that Artorias is the one who did it so yeah you can see the dark kind of coming into the arena um, there's some stuff up there but there's a locked door which we'll be coming back to so I'll, I'll do that later and then here's something, uh, Battle of Stoicism Gazebo. This is something that was added for the DLC um, that shows, I mean, basically, um, you can play online in, like, arena-type things here. And, um, yeah, you can see um, Silver Knights. In the images here for the for the duels, the death match, um, the duels, and these are different. Uh, so there's duels, uh, team, and death match. And this is one map called the dais. Dais. This is the ruins, and it's the same ones here. And uh, I probably shouldn't do this. I don't think anything happens if you don't die, but you get the uh, purple coward's ring or purple, purple coward's crystal similar to the black separation crystal. Victory in this battle once led to ancient Anarlando, but even in the absence of its overseer capitulation is a disgrace. In the name of warrior's honor, do not quickly resort to use this crystal. So, um... So yeah, um, so basically this was the proving ground before Sen's Fortress. Um, and I suppose uh, we could say that Sen's Fortress was probably a proving ground for Silver Knights as well. Um, or it could be exclusively the, uh, the undead uh, pilgrim as prophesied. Um, but either way, I mean, this one is certainly is, uh, used for uh, Silver Knights. I suppose that's probably why there's Silver Knight armor in Sen's Fortress. It probably was a proving ground for Silver Knights that were coming to fight for Anne Orlando. Well, that's interesting. It shows you one against one, two against two, and then four all for one. These are kind of fun, um, because you, uh... You uh, fight, um, like the deathmatch, you just, you fight until you die, and then you keep coming back, and it's based on a timer. They have similar things in uh, Dark Souls 3. But, uh, so yeah, let us, uh... Rest here at, uh, Ulusil which is now falling apart. 
Um, and let's see here. Let's let's kindle this all up. I don't think the guardian soul is used for anything. I'm not gonna do anything with it until I can guarantee that. Uh, but let's um, kindle this bonfire all the way up. Clearly, I'm gonna need it because um, I'm re I realized, <clears throat> you know, during that fight that you know my build, although fast and and, and still relatively powerful, um, you know, has a low stability or poise, I guess, and that was what was killing me during that fight. And uh, it could be the case that I will need to. Uh, I mean, for Manus, I certainly am going to need some of that stuff. Um, but for now, I like fast rolling, so I will, I will just do this, and I will tank some damage, I guess, and fall down a lot, and then <clears throat> have 20 Estes. Yeah, you could hear someone screaming. There's a lot of interesting sounds we can hear here. But uh, we will deal with stuff here in Uwasil in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Oh, I suppose I should level up here. Uh, might as well try some endurance just in case I can start wearing things. Um, but yeah. Thanks for watching, and uh, um, more in the next episode. Bye.